What's good, people? Kai Storm in the building. And this here is your roll term story time by Kai Storm. Now, this story basically goes down in New York City around 2004, early summer. Right? So... I would tell you what I'm smoking, but I, I don't really remember. All I know is that this is some good shit, so therefore, you know, we just, we just gonna go with it and continue the story, right? Yeah, let's just do that. So, basically, 2004. I was working at the, the during the summertime. I was working for this company on 34th Street. Wait, on 36th Street, actually. And um, at the time, my daughter, my one and only daughter at the time, was staying for the uh, for the week. She would be staying at my friend's house in Brooklyn because. It, uh, where I lived at in the Bronx, uh, it would have been ridiculous for me to get up every morning to travel to Brooklyn to drop her off and then make it to work on time. So, Monday through Friday, she would stay at my friend's house. You know what I'm saying? I'd provide food and everything, pay her and everything. And, you know, on the weekends, she'd come home. Now, on this particular... I would say it had to have been a Wednesday because I, I kind of remember it for the middle the middle of the week. Um, this particular day, when I was heading out to Brooklyn to just drop off some money and some some groceries and whatnot, um, I I, I decided to take along a friend with me. You know what I mean? Because I had told her that there was this weed store there was this weed spot right around the corner for from where my daughter was staying and it was a vegetable store it was a fruit and vegetable store i know you're probably like wait a minute a fruit and vegetable store yeah nigga it was a fruit and vegetable store during this time during this time like i said 2004 new york city weed was not legal at that time so you know finding little spots here and there that that or finding you know people that sold weed was you know always a, a good thing you know what i mean it was always a good thing and this it was a real fruit and vegetable store i'm talking about a fruit and vegetable store that the ones that the chinese be running and you have a a, a, a mexican in the back working or on the side working either way it was a fruit and vegetable store, you know, and it was right around the corner. So I say, and so I told my friend about it and she was like, fuck it. Let's go to Brooklyn, cop some weed and let you know, I'll go with you to do whatever you doing. And then we, and then we come home with some, some good Brooklyn smoke, right or wrong. What could be wrong with that? What could be wrong with that? So of course. We get to Brooklyn, fine, right after work. We go to the, we go to the, the, the fruit vegetable spot. We buy a couple 20s. I think I bought like three of them. Um, my homegirl bought like maybe two of them or th two or three, either two to four of them. I'm not sure. But either way, we all had a nice amount of weed on us. And, you know, because... We in Brooklyn, and it's going to take us a, a minute to get back to the Bronx and whatnot. We decide we're going to roll up and smoke a little bit before we, you know, roll up out. You know what I mean? We're going to roll up before we roll out. You know what I'm saying? Roll up before we roll out. Yeah. We in Brooklyn. During the time where weed is not legal. So... And prior to this situation, the most contact I ever had with police was, you know, police running up on you when, you know, you smoking. They either, you know, throw away what you smoking or 
They never found nothing, so therefore I got to smoke after they left. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. Shit like that, you know? And um, so, but, uh, so I never had a situation with police. And we before this, never. You know? So, of course, I'm not thinking about it. You know, so we standing, we standing outside, we smoking, we having a good old time, me and my homegirl. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, yo, this car zooms up and pulls up on us. And, and let me just mention one thing. Again, I've never had, I already said that though. I've never had no situations with police. See how I roll a perfect blunt? But but that's another subject. But um, I never had no situations with police. So, I don't recognize police signals. You feel me? I don't recognize police signals. Nah, I, I don't know about this. But my homegirl, on the, on the other hand, she had a couple of run-ins with the law in her lifetime prior to this particular situation I'm talking about. Okay? She had a couple of situations in her lifetime prior to this. So when she saw the car zoom up, she knew exactly what the fuck was going on. She immediately turns to me and says, Oh, damn, we mad dirty. And... Because I don't understand what she said. Because I assumed, I didn't know what the fuck she was talking about. I assumed that when she said dirty, I thought she meant dirt on our clothes. And I'm looking at her like, girl, what you talking about? Dirty how? Bitch, we just standing here. What happened? And then the, the two police pop out of the fucking vehicle. And they're walking towards us. And they stop in front of us, and now they're talking to us. And because, again, my homegirl knew what was happening, she goes into this discussion with them and starts talking whatever she said. All I know is I couldn't hear shit. I didn't hear shit. All I knew was that I was standing in front of police with a blunt in my hand and, and and almost and, and three bags of weed in my in, in my purse. And because it was my first time, bitch, I started crying. I folded like a chair. I mean, I folded like a chair, nigga. Like a chair. I folded like a chair. Like I I started crying. All kind of shit was happening to me. They put the cuffs on us. They put us in the back, the the back of the paddy wagon, <laughs> and and bitch, I and, and bitch, I was just hoping that they was gonna let us go eventually. But my homegirl was standing there talking about, nah, we it's all good. We gonna go home tomorrow. Bitch, you said go home tomorrow. Tomorrow, it sounded like she said year twenty thirty five. When cars fly. That's what she said to me. It sounded like she said, years, 2020, 2035, the year of our Lord, and, 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 and cars was going to be flying and shit. That's what, you know what I'm saying? That's what it sounded like she said to me. I'm, I, that's what I heard. So, naturally, the, the, the folded chair kept folding, okay? The folded chair was just folding and folding and folding and folding fuck out of here. I didn't understand what the fuck was going on. Bitch, the police took us to 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 to, to Central Bookings because yes, in New York City, that's how it goes down here. It's a damn shame that I know that that other cities do it differently. But my point is, we not gonna talk about how, why I know other cities do it differently. What I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, okay, what I'm saying is, is that. In New York City, they take you to Central Bookings. Central Bookings, you put, they put you in a room, and the room ain't got no windows. It's just hard ass walls and shit. 
And then they take you to, to, to the actual jail where you will be held at. And before they take, before you um, get taken up to the, the the cell, they got you in this processing area. And baby, I gotta tell you about this processing area. So the processing area, you cuffed, you and like ten other chicks cuffed to each other. Right, and y'all in a line on one side, and you're standing in front of a, a of a holding cell with twenty men, and they are all handcuffed to each other. Okay, so picture it. It's a it's a holding cell. Twenty men are handcuffed to each other. Me as a woman, uh, handcuffed to, to 10 other females, police officers in, are there. Now, let me describe the clothes I had on. I happened to have a shirt, something sort of like this, no sleeves. I, I didn't have a bra on because at, at, at 2004, <laughs> I could walk the streets without a fucking bra. I can't do that shit now. But I could walk the streets without a fucking bra in 2004, bitch. Yes, I could. Yes, I could. I sure did. I did it on a regular basis. Yes, I could. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. <coughs> Ciao. Yes. So, I had on a shirt similar like this. I didn't have on no bra. I had on some pants, some tight-ass pants that literally had a small string in the front that kept the pants on my on my body like literally without the string the pants was falling off and, and so i had on a shirt like this no bra and pants with with string in, in, at the front and some wedge heels again i wasn't dressed for jail Bitch, I wasn't dressed for jail. I wasn't dressed to go to jail. I wasn't dressed for any jail activities. Who? I wasn't. Not me. I wasn't. No. I was dressed to be cute and, 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 and go out to drinks after work. That's what the fuck I was. What a day party. That's what the fuck I was dressed for. Okay. But apparently I had to spend the night in jail. So. We get to this section where the where I'm in front of the holding cell, cuffed to other chicks. The, the holding cell got men. They cuffed to other niggas. And all of a sudden, the smart ass, smart a uh, uh, sarcastic ass police officers see the string on my pants and say, "Hey, ma'am, we're gonna have to take that string because we don't want you to 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 commit suicide with that string." Nigga, what? The fuck is you talking about commit suicide? I want to go home. Fuck, I'm going to commit suicide for. None. And, and, and these, this string holds up my pants. Without the string, my pants fall down. We don't give a fuck. We, we, gonna, we, we need that string. You're going to choke yourself with that string. Needless to say, I had to give him the string. And when, needless to say, that when I, when I gave up the string, my pants started falling off. And so, at this point in time, because my pants are falling, because I have on thongs, literally the men that are cuffed inside the holding cell, they're all yelling at me trying to get my phone number. And I'm just like, who? what, what am I supposed to do here? What exactly do you people want me to do? Yell out my phone number to all of you? We're in jail. How you gonna write it down? You, what, what the, what is this? What exactly is going on here? And baby, as stupid as it was, they didn't let me have my strength till I was leaving. 
the jail cell was just it was another completely different experience because there were it was it was one cell and it was like 20 of us in there and one girl everybody kept looking at her crazy because she kept thinking that she was gonna go home the next day when according to her they caught her in a stolen vehicle with drugs and guns and her boyfriend and she doesn't live in new york so in her mind she was thinking that oh yeah they're just gonna let me go tomorrow girl no they not no they not no they not you know and then there was the the situations, I mean, it's a jail, so it's not clean, you know what I'm saying, the toilet is right there, you gotta use the toilet in front of everybody, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying, there was just, you know, there was roaches and rats crawling around, just, just, it, it was just a disgusting situation, and it wasn't until the next day, where, you know, we go, go to this little court situation judge looks at you and says oh don't get in trouble for six months and we'll take this off your record and and i was just like just like i i just wanted it to be over i just wanted the whole shit to just be the fuck over me and my homegirl we didn't get out of jail at the same time but she she got out of jail a little bit later because she was talking some extra shit and they 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 let her out like maybe a couple like like about three hours after they let me out but when they let me out child I literally Took off all the clothes I had on, threw them shits away, even the shoes, I threw them shits away. And I can say that since then I ain't been arrested for weed. <laughs> I can say since then I ain't been arrested for weed, you know. And, and, and I can also say that... Um, well, I don't know for sure, but I would say that 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 one weed faux pas didn't really affect my life in any kind of way. At least I don't. At least if it did, I didn't feel any impact of it. But some people do. Some people actually do. You know what I mean? But um. And, uh, well, the reason why I'm even bringing this up in the first place, because now I got to come back to the point. <laughs> the weed is making me forget, girl. Anyway, so the, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because Motherhood Sex Marijuana and uh, The Ore Project has gotten together to do, um, what are we doing? Lord, the weed is making me forget. Let me start that again. Let me start that again. Let me start that again. I think I'm ready. So, Motherhood Sex Marijuana and the Ore Project uh, that is backed by Nia Tally Gill. We are getting together to um, put our time together to um, get the Ore Project going. The Ore Project is something that Nia, that Nia is putting together in order to gain donation dollars to uh start the ore project which is going to expunge which is going to work on expunging um people's records off marijuana charges not only are they going to work on expunging but they're also going to do the after work which is uh, anyone that needs to get back into society or any any situations anything in life that they, that is being affected by their life that that the charge affected their life the or project is going to be is is being created to handle and be an assistance in that particular section so motherhood sex marijuana is definitely a part of the or project it is it is definitely promoting the or project please check out our website motherhoodsexmarijuana.com 
and you'll see the GoFundMe project. Please donate to the GoFundMe. And if you want to be a part of the project, let us know. So, Motherhood Sex Marijuana, the OR Project, Nia Tally Gill, we all together, we all trying to expunge American records. Well, sponge mal and marijuana charges off Americans. That's what we're trying to do. Motherhood Sex Marijuana in the building. We out. And, and let me get back to smoking because, shit, maybe I shouldn't have did this while smoking because that, 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 you know. That's where the points, you know, the, 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 the points start to linger. The point, you know, yeah, I mean, sometimes, you know, I be going off.